Yo, what is going on? Welcome to the Boys Are Back in Town podcast. I'm Dustin. I'm here with my co-host. Hey guys, I'm Brett. And uh, yeah, so today I got the first topic for you, man. Are the Giants for real? Yes and no. I mean, they elaborate. Are... I'm a Giants fan, so you know, you yeah, know, I already. They am. are. They are going to win this week. Facts. They do have a fairly easy schedule, Facts. and the NFC is pretty weak. Yeah, but we're playing so a lot of AFC I, teams upcoming. And the Giants are just going to keep getting healthier. Yeah, exactly my point. I, I Man, if you're a Giants fan, we're, we're excited right now. We deserve this. We've been through the fucking ringer. But yeah, man, <laughs> I, I definitely... I w- Don't be surprised if you see the Giants 8-2... and two, Seven and three or nine and one in the coming games, man. Just don't be don't be surprised. Yeah, it definitely was a weird week this week. Uh, screwed up all of my picks. Um, like the the Giants beating the Ravens, I guarantee maybe ten percent of people thought that would happen. You were yeah, one of them. Me, I was one of them. Um, <laughs> the Jets beat the Packers. Nobody seen Jets that coming. The Packers. Falcons beat the 49ers. Molly whopped the Niners. Yeah. The Steelers, Steelers beat, beat the, the Bucks. A week full of upsets, yeah. man. I'm telling you, it was it was a I wild just, week. I don't. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the only other thing I really want to talk about is what do you think about Robbie Robbie Anderson going to the Cardinals? Okay, good. I also had that with Hollywood Brown going down. I think Robbie Anderson is going to catch his stride and look like he did on the Jets. I I don't think he's going to be a prime number one or even a number two. But he might be a solid flex every now and then. Like, he's a boomer bust. He's going to give you 30 or he's going to give you two. So do you think he upgraded that quarterback? Oh, easily. With Kyler Murray's arm talent and accuracy, as much as Kyler Murray is, like, average in most areas this season, he can still sling the damn ball. He he made Hollywood Brown look like a top 10 receiver compared to last year on the Ravens. So you and, don't think he went from a number one overall pick to another number one overall pick that's coddled because they're number one overall pick? Uh, I mean, the only reason why <laughs> Baker has a job, in my opinion, is because he's number one overall pick. I liked him in Cleveland, man. He he was in his element in Cleveland. I I don't know what happened. He went to Carolina, different player, different dude. Or, wasn't Baker and Kyler both Oklahoma guys? Oh, yeah, both Oklahoma. Kyler actually backed yeah. up Baker his senior year, so... Okay. Well, another quarterback controversy. What do you think of Bailey Zappi? Quarterback one or no? I think he's, yeah, he's the real deal. Um, He definitely is showing more kind of just a better player than Mac Jones. And Mac Jones is consistent. Yeah. But I think Zappi can bring that like Joe Burrow-esque kind of like just you don't know what's going to happen. Well, they were running the ball with them, like like showing that they're obviously scared to throw with a backup quarterback. And then this week, they just turned them loose. They just said, you know, it starts slinging it, dude. And then that paired with their their really good run game. The Patriots have an insane run game, and yeah, it just it looked good. The Patriots are in a top five AFC team. I don't think it's showing on the the power rankings. I think they're like six or seven, but yeah, I think they're yeah. they're a contender in the AFC that's also not very strong. Yeah, um, we got some bye weeks, which are kind of a ridiculous amount of team. Like the teams, uh, four teams: the Bills, the Rams, the Vikings, and the Eagles. That's a lot of high caliber players in one week. Yeah, a lot of projections went from one forty to around one twenty one this week. <laughs> like everybody yeah. it looks like they're hurting so yeah, yeah a lot of a lot of heavy hitters are jefferson. on the bye jefferson mm-hmm. cook josh allen Diggs, jalen hurts miles sanders aj brown AJ brown devonta smith he's been poking it's, it's in there crazy yeah there's it's a lot of buys. I don't know why. Then this is probably going to be a pretty boring week for football i hate to say it but all the fun teams to watch are out yeah, all right, we got Dak coming back. Is he going to start? Yes. Yeah, I assume so. Cooper Rush, we can talk about Cooper Rush a little bit. I know you're not too excited about his performance, but 
the quarterback controversy he, is over. Yeah, he's a game manager. He is a going going to be a career backup. Yes, that, he had his Nick Foles it. moment and he he blew it. Yeah, but uh, not a lot of guys on the waiver wires this week. Um, I think if you had to like you know replace. Jalen Hurts, Matthew Stafford, Kirk Cousins, Jalen Hurt or um, Josh Allen, uh, Jimmy G. He's average and consistent, and they're playing the Chiefs. I mean, Chiefs let up a lot of points. I mean, it especially the opposing quarterbacks. Yep. Derek Carr looked like a fucking superstar against them. So we'll see how it goes. My quarterback pickup to replace Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen this week is Marcus Mariota. Yep. He's been averaging 20 a week, and last week he drops 24 and upset. I think the Falcons are on a roll right now. I think the Falcons go on a little bit of a tear. Whether they win games or not, I think the offense is going to put up points. Yeah, the rushing upside there is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my uh, my first running back, after watching him absolutely tear up the Giants, tear up the Giants off 10 touches, 119 yards, and a tutty. Kenyon Drake, 52% owned, with Dobbins still questionable, or he might even be out at this point. I think Kenyon Drake is a great pickup and possibly even a great flex. Yeah. Um, My running back, uh, I got Donta Foreman. A lot of of rumors going around. Uh, McCaffrey could be traded. See, I was seeing I McCaffrey to heard. the Chiefs. I mean, McCaffrey could go anywhere. I mean, if think if McCaffrey went to the Bills, the Rams, the like, Rams, they need yeah, running back. Nasty man. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if I've seen all the numbers and stuff, if McCaffrey goes out like to another team. Don Foreman will be the starter. He's getting more carries, more catches, more down, like more playing time than uh, Chuba Hubbard. The thing you got to watch out for about the Panthers is the offense. I don't think the Panthers offense is capable of getting more than 10 first downs in a game right now. It's probably true. I just I I would be wary of starting any any Carolina Panthers offensive player, especially with Robbie Anderson now moved to the Cardinals. Yeah, the only one viable is McCaffrey. Uh, my last waiver wire pickup is uh, Wandale Robinson at the receiver. Yep. First game back healthy, caught a touchdown. He dropped some balls that probably would have put him up over the 20-point mark in a PPR league, but I, I think it, the more he gets his feet wet, the more he plays, the more he gets comfortable in the offense. He only seen like 47-ish percent of the snaps. And he's still mm-hmm. got like five targets. So, I mean, I, I think I've he becomes the, a big player in the Giants offense. I've got the stats here for you. I've had him as a wave wire pickup as well. Um, nice. He played 23% of the snaps. Yeah, I knew it was low. 23. That's crazy. He, he ran 11 routes and was targeted four times on those 11 routes. And he got three, three receptions. 37 yards and yeah. a touchdown. And a tutty. Something you got to look out for, man. And he, he looks explosive. He looks like he can make a make a play across the middle of the field like like an Amon Ra or a, like a Tyree Kill. I'm just not yeah. near as fast. Do you have any more waiver wire pickups? I've got nope. one more. I am all done uh, with waiver wires. Do you know who K. Dotton is? Heard the name. Don't know who it is. <laughs> Tied in for the... Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, he died. He's a rookie this year. Um, you know, Brait's our only guy there right now, and he is actually hurt. And Brait was hurt in week four for a concussion, and Otten played 94% of the snaps. And I mean, what was his target he's share? He's been scoring pretty well. Um, I'm not sure on target share, but I know in week four... Uh, Otten was able to get four targets, and then in week five, he was able to get seven targets. And then... Not too uh, shabby, man. Yeah. 
for a rookie tight end playing with Tom Brady, I could see him being able to get more. And it's just a terrible tight end year. So any any shimmer of light for a tight end is just good. Yeah, any tight end that you're seeing that's even honestly averaging eight a week, it, it you got to lock them down. Most tight ends, I'm happy to get five points out of my tight ends this year, it seems. So. Oh, and I, I forgot my main guy, too. I went and picked him up in our league. I completely even forgot to write him down for my notes. Um, Greg Dolich. Oh, Dolich, the, yeah. Yeah, Dolich. Whatever, um, Denver Broncos. Uh, I watched that game, and he, he was good. Looked good. Uh, I'm going to start him this week. Probably shouldn't, but I got Goddard on a bye, so we're just going to see what happens there. I mean, yeah, he looked like a safety blanket for Russ, who's struggling, and a struggling quarterback, all you need and a struggling quarterback is a tight end. That's it. You get a reliable tight end, throw it to the big man, make it, let him make a play for you. I agree. Well, starting uh, tight ends, um, uh, do you got any more waivers? Nope, nope. All right, well, anyway, keeping with tight ends, I got a big start. Daniel Bellinger. Um, I've been saying it. I've been saying it. I started him a couple weeks in our dynasty. He gave me two touchdowns in a row. So in our redraft league, I decided to pick him up. I dropped Knox. I think it's time to cut ties with Knox. And I, I put I put Bellinger in the start. So I, I've fooled down with it. I think he's going to continue to be a big part of the Giants offense especially against this Jaguars defense. So, yeah, that's my first start. Well, I've got your other guy for a start, um, Gerald Everett. Uh, he gets a ton of volume for a tight end. And he yeah. has 36 targets this year already, and that's a lot for a tight end. <clears throat> my only issue with Everett, we can get to it later. I actually have him in my sit category. Yeah, well, as much as I want to, seven targets is huge, but it's, it's, he's literally getting thrown to in triple coverage, it, and I just, I think you sit him for a week, let the Chargers offense figure it out, and then, you know, don't, obviously don't drop him, because you, you still want a guy with high target share, but a guy that can give you one point or seven points, I mean... It, you just got to look for something better and just wait for him to bounce back and give you a 10-point game. Um, I got a QB that I'd like to start here, um, and I'm not biased, but uh, Dak Prescott. Um, playing the Lions defense. I mean, Lions defense have been terrible. Where he is medically cleared to play. He is throwing in practice, and they don't even have him questionable for this week. Yeah, I definitely think that's a start against the the Lions defense because the Lions defense makes literally anybody look great. So I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think the Cowboys break the 40-point mark for the first time this season. That'll be nice, yes. And going along with against that Lions defense, I'm going to say something crazy, but it's time to start Zeke. I mean, I know most people probably already have because they have a lot of draft capital in them, but last week he had 6.2 yards per carry. And Dallas should get ahead pretty quick, and when they do that, they seem to get into a run-heavy script, and why not run Zeke? Yeah, well, I mean, you got to give it to a guy who can just put his head down and get you four yards, three plays first down, three plays first down. Especially whenever you start to get Zeke rolling, it seems like you can't get him stopped. Yep. Because I also have your other boy on my start list. I have him starting as a tandem. I like Tony Pollard's start this week. I, uh, I think well. Zeke Zeke busts him down for so long, and then they put Tony Pollard in a third down, and he busts a 60-yard tutty, just just it like that. Happens. Give you a 12-point play, just like that. I think it. I and that that home run play like opportunity is the only reason you start Tony Pollard. Yeah. But Every I week. like the start against the Lions defense. I think it's a good start. Yeah. I think you got to start them both. If you have them both, play them both. Fuck it. Running back one, running back two. <laughs> just rather let them do it. Just let do it. feed, bro. Um, and I got a receiver um, for starting. Uh, Alan Lazard. He is quietly having a good year already. Um, in the five games he's played, he has 34 targets. 
And then the first game he played, he only had three targets. So that's 31 targets over the last four games. Um, they did lose Cobb for a couple weeks. Um, and Lazard has either scored a touchdown or gained 100 yards in each game he's played this year. Yeah, I mean, he's he's looked like a beast. Um, this the only issue I have with Lazard is the Packers offense right now. I'm not sure. It might just be a little rough patch, a little two-game two game breather, but they I got absolutely rolled by the Jets. Yeah, and that was an upset that we had, but... Do you think they come back this week? I agree. I do yeah, think they come yeah, back this week. For sure. But talking of the Jets, you have to start him. Brees Hall, oh, runaway yeah. rookie of the year. It's, I, you can, we can argue it, but I think it's not, I don't think it's going to be close. No, it's not. And he's just too good to not be starting him. Yeah, mm. I, I've seen some where people are questioning. I've seen in the, the fantasy chat rooms. Should I start Brees Hall in the flex? Like, bro, if you have Brees Hall, you better start him in the one. Give that man some fucking yeah. respect. You shouldn't even be questioning it. Yeah, it's everybody's like, oh, it's the Jets. Dude, the Jets are young. The Jets are fucking hungry. I like I have mad respect for the Jets right now. They're playing ball. Yeah, 100%. What uh, do you think about uh, the Jets receivers? You think any of them are a start? We sat them last week, which was a good call. I sit them all again. Yeah, I don't I, like the Jets receivers, man. I... I like the Jets receivers. I don't like the Jets quarterback. I think they're talented. All three of them. I think they're all talented. Um, but I just, I don't, I don't like it. Nope. That that offense runs through Brees Hall as Brees Hall's offense. If Zach Wilson oh, I mean, gets a bone every now and then, maybe. But no, it's Zach Wilson's offense for now. Not we that Brees Hall's. Earlier. Um, <clears throat> you know, you were talking some crap on Melvin Gordon. <laughs> for good reason but um do you think that he'll be starter this week because nathaniel hackett come out and said that he will be the starter this week so that today he came out and said that he will be the starter that melvin gordon will be the starter well i mean he he was the starter last week and he got like less than 10 touches so I'm not said, sure what to said make of that. He Gordon didn't do anything wrong. It's just who they went with. Well, I mean, it didn't work for them, so maybe they made a mistake there. They were also <laughs> in a close game where they couldn't afford a turnover, which is, I, I don't like Melvin Gordon because of his turnovers. It's hard to get him going. Until the Denver offense gets anything going, I don't start anyone from Denver, dude. I, I like all the receivers. I like them all. Can't start them. Nope. Maybe Jerry Judy in a flex, but yeah. Russell Wilson is not playing good enough to respect a true number one right now, so Cortland Sutton's out of it. Hmm. We already did him. Um, do you have any more starts that you want to um, go through? Yeah, or? so I was pretty big on him last week. Uh, I've been pretty big on him the past couple episodes. I've been saying pick him up, pick him up. But this week, it's time to start him. Brian Robinson Jr. came out in his first full 100% healthy game. Got a touchdown, got plenty of touches, got plenty of opportunities to make plays. It was a generally low-scoring game with just mainly a defensive game. No one really got anything going. But Brian Robinson definitely looks like he can play ball dude looks like he can go crazy so yeah i'm starting him again i think it's a good call okay um you ready to go through some sits yep you already got my first sit so i'd like to hear yours um eno benjamin <coughs> yeah easy sit um new orleans very tough run d very tough d in general um and he's actually been limited in practice and they're playing thursday tomorrow night so that's just, I think that's too many things that can go wrong against them that could go wrong. What well, can go um, wrong probably will go yeah. wrong, yeah. Yeah. And I've also got Jared Goff. Um, as a sit, 100%. As a sit, yeah. But playing tough Cowboys defense, he's not well under pressure. Um, and laid up a big old goose egg for touchdowns against the Patriots. Yeah, uh, definitely didn't look good. Patriots rolled them, which I don't think any of us really expected, but 
Bailey Zappi, like I said, God tier. Um, <laughs> I think you gotta sit David Monty this week. Yeah, thoughts on that one? Yeah, um, I have him starting still, but that's it's obviously not not gonna stay. I don't like him against the Patriots defense. I don't like the the Bears offense right now. If anyone, I, I do like starting Khalil Herbert against the Patriots defense. Because you got to have, if you're going to start somebody from the Bears offense, you need a boomer bust guy. So I go Khalil Herbert over uh, Monty. But only person I'd be willing to start from the Bears offense, if I was in a pinch, would be Darnell Mooney. Um, I'm not touching a running back against the Patriots, especially with that Bears team. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty hard, tough to. Yeah. But uh, I got a uh, Drake <laughs> London, um, which is sad to say, but. Uh, Falcons are just, they're running the ball. They're, they don't even care to throw much. Um, and if it's its either Kyle Pitts or Drake London week, they, they can't have both. Um, and the Bengals are only allowing 27.2 fantasy points per game to receivers. And now when you split that up, you know, among a couple receivers, that doesn't leave a lot for Drake London. No, it leaves about, give you about a nine piece. Yeah, eight to nine, and that's not enough. No. Sure isn't. Yeah. Um, we can get down to it later in our actual game picks. Um, I I see where you're coming from with the stats. I, I don't think Drake London will have a big game, no. But I, I do think that the Falcons are going to be a little bit better than they show on the stat sheet. My next sit is CEH. I, I think it would be best for CEH to get traded. I don't know why he he lost his like in his number one running back spot in the Chiefs offense, but he doesn't get any checkdowns. He doesn't. He gets like maybe 10, 11, 12 rushes a game. I yeah. Sometimes he puts up big points, but he's literally so touchdown into uh, touchdown dependent that it's it's just too much of a risk to go with him. Yeah, hundred percent. I've got Mike Gusecki as my tight end sit for the week. Um, really? The Gritty King? Hey, Waddle Hill takeover, man. It's 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 here. Um, Tua's back. Did Tua really ever look at Gusecki? No. Uh, no. No. Yeah. Teddy Bridgewater gave Gusecki all the time and love. Yeah. Um, Steelers defense is top 10 against tight ends. So I just I don't see Gusecki having, Gusecki having a good week. Um, Tyreek Hill... Jalen Waddle, big weeks. Two is going to have a good week. Yeah, I'm going to say 300 plus yards passing. Yeah. Maybe two uh, Tyreek and Jalen Waddle both have 100 yard games with like nine, 10 receptions. So both those guys are automatic starts, no doubt. Um, My receiver said it's a little biased. I do like the guy, I just don't like receivers against the Giants defense I'm sitting Christian Kirk this week the only I I think if there's a start you maybe start Evan Ingram because the Giants defense is horrid against opposing tight ends but we we are shutting down number one receivers left and right so I think Christian Kirk just just gets shut down thoughts okay um I haven't really paid much attention to the Giants secondary and what they're doing to opposing wide receivers. Um, but, like, the Ravens, like, they didn't have a wide receiver technically, so, of course, they weren't going to do well. So, I don't I don't know, I guess. Well, I mean, you've seen them against CD. CD had a couple, had a home run, but, like, other than that, he's he was real quiet all night, you know what I mean? Like, little dink and dunk passes. But the Giants have yet to be actually torched by a wide receiver. Shut down DJ Moore. Shut down, uh, what's his name, uh, Traylon Burke on the Titans. Like I, I just I, yeah. I'm starting the Giants defense and I'm sitting Christian Kirk. Okay. Got any other sits you'd like to talk about before we move <clears throat> on to our game picks? Nope, those are all for me. Kind of got right. a limited script. Yeah, it's just a middle, you know, middle of the road week. Uh, Week a lot of seven. buys. Yeah. yeah, a lot of buy, a lot of important buys. Um, but yeah, a lot of fantasy playing some... buys. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so um, first game on the slate, we got the Saints and – hold on, my – Saints and Cardinals. <laughs> Saints and Cardinals. Why is my – okay, here we go. We got the Saints and Cardinals. The Cardinals are two-point favorites. I don't know how. I like the Saints here. All right, I am going Cardinals. Well, we're getting spread off again. We actually did not go over our our thing last week. I jumped in there too quick. I went seven and seven. Brett went five and nine. That puts me at twenty nine and seventeen on the year, and Brett at twenty four and twenty two on the year. Yep. So um, yep. last week was a little rough. A lot of a lot of upsets that nobody seen coming. A lot of people probably lost their survival uh, survivor pools last week, like easily. Oh, easy, yeah. Um, next game I have on the slate is the Packers and the Commanders. Packers, Commanders, yeah. I've got Packers making a comeback for that one. Yeah, I think the Packers take it over. I don't see a way in hell that the Commanders beat the Packers. Uh, not but... with Taylor Heineke. Yeah, it's just not going to happen, man. Uh, next game we have AFC, what is it, AFC South game, the Browns and the Ravens. Yeah. I got the Ravens. I oh, think yeah. the Ravens, the some reason, Lamar turns it the fuck on against the Browns and doesn't hold back. So it's it's going to be a show. He's going to have a little bit of a revenge game going on from last week. So I got the Ravens winning that one. Hmm. Next game on the slate, Buccaneers, Panthers. Who you got? I have the Bucks. Also have the Bucks. Don't really see a way in hell that the Panthers get it going. You were high on them last week, and uh, those dreams got shut down pretty quick. <laughs> they did. Yep. Right. <laughs> they, they was, did not roll out. <laughs> Next game here. This right. is a big one for you. We got the Dallas Cowboys facing the Detroit Lions. Oh, I'm taking my Cowboys with Dak Prescott. 100%. Yeah, I'm going to have to defer. I'm going to take just game. Yeah, I'm taking the Cowboys. There's no way in hell the Lions win that ball game. No. Jared Goff's going to get sacked 18 times. It's going to be a show. Uh, keeping with the NFC East, we got the Giants and Jags. You got. I got the Giants. Yeah, you got to, man. Giants moved to 6 and 1. I think it's a lock. They are a three point underdog. Don't know how. Don't know what Vegas is thinking, but uh, maybe they know something we don't. Maybe a bet I'll have to hit up this weekend. I'm heading to Louisiana. I'll be able to legally bet. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, mm. you got to take the money line on them, plus 140. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely probably hit that one up. Maybe try um, to parlay it with a couple teams. Yeah, parlay it with the Cowboys. You get a parlay with the Cowboys spread, and you get a minus 105. That'll be actually pretty nice. Um, The Colts and the Titans. Got a Matty Titans. Ice comeback. I am also going with the Titans. Um, yeah, I, not too big on the Colts right now, man. I don't. I don't think Matty Ice can throw for 350 yards twice, two times in a row. Like I just don't see it. I mean, even if he does get it going offensively, I still don't think the Colts are a better team than the Titans overall. So I mean, yeah, he could probably get it going. Him and Michael Pittman can put on a show, but. I just still don't see them being a complete enough ball team to, and a ball no ball program, whatever you know what I meant. Anyways, uh, next game we got the Falcons and the Bengals. Oh, I'm taking Bengals, hundred percent. I got the Falcons. I think Bengals are back on track. Uh, yeah, you might be right. I think the the Bengals are a good looking ball club, but I there's just no doubt in the momentum that the Falcons have right now. I think they keep picking up steam. I'm and they smelling, steam uh, smelling an ass whooping. It might be. It might be a 40 to fucking 7 loss, but it could thinking. also be a, what, like a 21-14 game. Like it, it can be yeah. It can be a slugfest. Well, you just never know what these two teams, you, man. No, you never know. Oh, man, we got another one that we might be split on here. We got the Texans and the Raiders. I got Raiders. I got the Texans, man. Seven I point just, underdogs. I, I just I I just think the Texans are they're really wishy washy, but you never know. I think against the Raiders they might put something down. I believe the Raiders are a good team. 
I believe they can be a good team. And I just don't believe that the Texans are a good team. They're not a complete team, but they can put up numbers if they need to. Yeah. All right, well, we got a hot team versus a cold team. Jets, Broncos, you got? I got the Jets, baby. I also got the Jets, man. I, I don't see a way in hell that the Broncos beat no, this Jets I mean, team Jets right now. Jets are freaking 4-2. and two. I mean, they're, they're looking good. Defense looks great. Yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a low scoring game for receivers for sure with yeah. Sauce Gardner and Pat Sertan going head to head against the number ones. So Two it's monsters. gonna be a run game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's gonna be nice. I mean, did you see uh, Sauce Gardner wearing the cheese head, man? Yeah. That was oh good. man, that was good. rookie trolls, man. They're funny, man. <laughs> All right, we got a cold team versus a hot team again. We got the Seahawks versus the Chargers. I got Chargers. I got the Hawks, man. I think the Seahawks stay hot with Geno, and they put on a show. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah, I know, dude. I don't know what's going on with me. They're a six-point underdog. I'm going to catch back up to you this week. Maybe I know something y'all don't. I don't know. Maybe. We got the Chiefs and the Niners for the last 3 o'clock game. Yeah, that, one's, that one's pretty easy. I got the Chiefs. I also have the Chiefs. It could be a close game. Chiefs are two and a half point favorites. I definitely think the over is in play for that game. Over 48 and a half points seems like a lock. So, yeah, take that how you will. Um, For the Sunday night primetime matchup, we actually have a decent one. Might be a slugfest. Steelers, Dolphins. I got Dolphins. I got the Dolphins, too. Two like we back. said, two is back. Tyreek, Jalen Waddle, primetime. Tyreek in primetime is a fucking animal. <laughs> he's just I'm a different sure. beast whenever the whole all eyes on him man 200 yards three touchdowns it's gonna happen hmm. and the monday night game we have the bears and the patriots man patriots are gonna kill them yeah patriots eight point favorite i think you take the patriots i think you take the patriots spread i think you take the eight points i it's it's not gonna be close the browns no. that not the browns the bears suck man bears are terrible <laughs> yeah man oh well that's all i got you good yeah yeah we're good uh we'll see you guys next week yeah man thanks you guys for tuning in uh if you guys are new around here make sure to subscribe we're on our way to 20 subs uh we're gonna keep uploading some shorts for DraftKings. if you guys want to see that content yeah just make sure to stay tuned thanks for tuning in y'all see ya the boys are back in town, boys.